everyone. This is Money Mom. Welcome to the channel. Today I want to chat with you briefly about essentials for a low spend, no spend year. Let's get right into it. I know low spend and no spends are very popular. I think there could be a lot of positive consequences from having one and they're a little different for everyone. So for me, a low spend slash no spend would be only buying essentials and sticking with needs versus wants and but being basically a mindful consumer of products and also services that's what i think now the first thing i think is if anybody thinks they want to go on a no spend low spend or they feel they need to for some reason is know your why are you doing it because everyone else is doing it are you doing it because you want to see where your money's actually going do you want to pay off debt do you want to increase your emergency savings do you want to cut spending why are you doing it? I think that that is really important. I'm working on being even a more mindful shopper than I was last year. I have improved each year, but I know I could do even better. So what is your why? That's the first thing. Next thing I wrote down was make sure to have a well-stocked, let's say you want to do it for a year, you really want to cut your spending. Have a well-stocked pantry, freezer, refrigerator. Obviously, that stuff's not going to last you all year, but at least to start your year off. Another thing I would do if I was really doing a, a no-spend, low-spend year, which I'm working more on mindful shopping and waiting more before I purchase something, one of the big things that I may do would be to purchase all my vitamins for the year, all my makeup for the year, all my toiletries, body washes, cleaning products, and get all that stuff purchased for the entire year so I have a really good stockpile because the less often we have to go to the store, even for needs, the less temptation. The more we stay out of the stores, if you're doing a low spend, no spend, the better. As a matter of fact, I've had so many of you and even a friend of mine say, I no longer go to the store. Yes, it costs a little bit of money, but I have stuff delivered. I find I save money overall because I'm not in the store looking at, oh, let me buy these on clearance. I get what's on my list and that is it and I'm staying out of the stores and it saves me money. Let me know if any of you do that. I'd like to hear about it. Next I wrote down is, this is important too, is, is there anything you need to buy right now? For example, let's say you said you want to do a low spend, no spend, and then you start on it and all of a sudden, you're, you know, your little boy Johnny needs new jeans because he grew out of it. Your husband Hank needs a new pair of glasses, you know, because they're getting older. You know, uh, your daughter Sarah needs a new phone because her phone just died. One of the first things that I would do is, is there anything that's an absolute need someone needs right now? If so, make those purchases. Then next, I would do the same thing with repairs. Now, there's things that might be good if you got them done. For example, I really do need new bathroom flooring. Is it essential? Does it affect how my home runs? No, not really. But let's say you no longer have hot water, you may need a new hot water heater. So some of these things may need to be purchased before you go on a low spend, no spend. And so I would get repairs and needs out of the way before starting this. I said that even before you pay off debt, if you want to go and become debt free, to do these things would be very helpful too. Because what's so discouraging to people that go on a low spend, no spend, or want to pay off debt is when they start it and then they have to backtrack and go, oh no, we need a new water heater. Oh no, we need new, two new tires on the car. If you can prepare for this stuff ahead, or take part of the money you're gonna to do to pay off debt and put it in a savings for that stuff, it can really help you from feeling discouraged and meet your goals faster. Okay, the next thing I wrote down is make sure to be set up for all activities you might enjoy. One thing I think people forget to do, and the other day I did this, I was going through and I actually have photo, not albums, boxes. I started going through all my photo boxes looking at old family photos. It was really fun. I don't know if any of you ever do that. Maybe you can make a puzzle, read a book, start write a book, you know, uh, maybe do a project around the house, paint a wall if you have some paint, you know, do anything that you think you might want to do and spend some time doing that. The next thing I would do is get out a budget book and start tracking all of your spending and also reallocate your budget and ask yourself, am I getting value from every all the services I'm using? Really start taking a deep dive into that. That will really help you. And last but not least, and we talk about this all the time, 
Just spend some time, since you're not out spending money, spend time at home, become a homebody, and organize and declutter each area of your home, and that's going to really help save you money because you're going to realize all the things you forgot you had. Start learning to make new recipes. Maybe learn to sew. Learn a new skill. There's all sorts of things we can do on a low spend, no spend. Are any of you on a low spend, no spend year, month, week? Do you guys even do that? If so, tell me about it in the comments below. That's all I have to say for now. I love you. I appreciate you. And I sure hope you come back for tomorrow morning's video. Bye-bye now.